Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to the course of real time embedded system. Today we are going to start chapter number 5, lecture number 11, memories. Uh, we have skipped chapter number 4 which is which we will discuss after finishing off this chapter. This chapter is about memories, different type of memories, their working and designing. So let's start this chapter. So the outline of this chapter includes memory writability and storage permanence, common type of memories, composing memory, memory hierarchy, and cache, and then finally we have advanced RAM. So this is our outline which we are going to discuss one by one in chapter number five. So let's move on to our first topic. So in this slide we will discuss the introduction about the memories. Any embedded system functionality consists of three aspects. Number one is processing, number two is storage, number three is communication. Basically, processing is the transformation of data, whereas storage is the retention of data for later use, and communication is the transfer of data. Each of these aspects must be implemented. We use processor for processing memory to implement storage and we use buses to implement communication in previous chapter we discussed common processor type as you remember there is custom single purpose processor we discussed that in chapter number two then we talked about general purpose processor in chapter number three in this chapter we will discuss memory in detail so let's move on to next slide so let's start by describing some basic memory concept. A memory stores large number of bits. These bits can be viewed as M words, as you can see here, M words of N bits. So these are M words of N bits each. We refer memory as M by N memory, M by N memory, as you can see in the above figure. The horizontal line represents words. These horizontal lines represent words. Whereas the vertical line represents bits. So these vertical lines represent bits. Whereas in lower figure, you can see the external view. So this is the external view. This is how a memory looks like. Okay. We require log to the base 2 of M address input line. So here you can see in this second line, let me highlight it for you here. We require log to the base 2 of M address line. In order to access the memory we need, these must address input signals. Okay. To identify a particular word, for example, if we have a memory of this is M and this is N. Okay. So, in that particular case, we require 3, 2, 7, 6, 8 bits. And how you can get 3, 2, 7, 6, 8 bits? By simply multiplying these two. So, for that, we require 12 address input signal. So, log to the base 2 of 4096 becomes 12. Okay? So, if you put this 12 here, Okay, let me just rub this out for you. And if you put this here, M, it will become this. Or if you put 12 here, it will become 4096. So ultimately, we need 8 bits. Okay, so now everything is clear. You have 3, 2, 7, 6, 8 total bits, 12 bits, 12 address input signals, 8 input output data signals. Okay. So, to read a memory means to retrieve the word of particular address, while a memory write means to store a word in a particular address. So, you can perform two operations. Either you can read or you can write. So, you can see here we have a read-write signal. A memory access to either read or write as I've told you. So, there is a select read-write, there is an enable 
in order to enable the memory. Multi-port access to different location. We have a memory known as multi-port in which we can simultaneously access data lines. So if we have a multi-port memory, it means we have multiple control lines, address line and data lines. So these are three important things. Read the read write signal enable and multi-port so if we have multiple access to different location simultaneously it means that we need to require multiple control lines multiple address line and multiple data lines okay so if you see here we have two raised power k into n read and write memory so here k is starting from a naught to a k minus 1 in our case the value of k is what in our case the value of k is 12 okay so we will have address lines from 0 to 11 okay so a naught a1 a2 a3 up to a11 whereas our input output data signal will be from q naught to q n minus 1 where n is 8 so ultimately q n minus 1 will be 7 okay i hope this is clear so 12 address input signals for accessing the words then we have bits and we have 8 input output data signals clear now let's move on to our next slide so in this slide we are going to talk about the writability of the memory we use writability to refer to the manner and speed a particular memory can be written. Okay. So starting with the number one, that is high end. In high end processor, writes to memory simply and quickly, for example, ROM. So if we have a high end memory processor, writes to memory simply and quickly. Okay. So we can simply and quickly write to the memory. Now we have second one is middle range. In middle range, processor writes to memory, but slower, for example, we have flash, the normal flash that you use, and EEPROM. EEPROM is electrically erasable, permanent, random, read-only memory, okay? And then we have low range. So, in lower range special equipment, programmer, for example, must be used to write to memory. So, we require programmer. Pro where is programmer? It's just a special piece of equipment which we use for programming. Okay. So, you might have seen those burners. So, we require programmer in order to write to memory location. And we have two types here. For example, we have EPROM that is erasable permanent read only memory and then we have otp rom otp rom is one time programmable read only memory coming towards the final range that is low end in low end memory bits store only during fabrication so we can only store bits during fabrication and example is masked program rom so you can see that ranges of writability in first there is high end processor writes speed is high and process write simply in middle range processor write but it is slower in lower range we need some sort of equipment to write whereas in lower end low end we can only write during fabrication okay now you can see in your book figure number 5.2 it will give you a more in-depth view of writability along with data storage permanence we will talk about that later on but on this slide let's talk about in-system programmable memory so in-system programmable memory can be written to by processor in embedded system using memory okay memory in high end and middle range of writability so in system programmable memory ranges between high end and middle range so 
between these two ranges. So can be written by processor in the barrier system using memory. So we can simply write to memory in embedded system using the memory. So let's move on to our next slide. Now, along with the writability, we will talk about the storage permanence. So as the way we have categorized the writability of the memory, we will categorize similarly the storage permanence in different ranges. So range of storage permanence starting from the high end. So in high end, essentially never loses bits. So if we have a high end storage, what does it mean? It means we will never lose any bits. For example, mask, ROM, okay, mask program, ROM. Now next is middle range. In middle range, memory holds bit days, months, or years after memory power source turned off. So if we turn off the power source of the memory, it will remain stored for months, years, but not for indefinitely. And we have an example, NVRAM, that is non-volatile read random access memory. Then coming to the lower range. So now we are coming to the lower storage permanence. Hold bits as long as power is supplied. So as long as power goes off, the bits will be gone. It means data will be gone. And the example is SRAM, that is your static random access memory. And finally, we have low end begins to lose bit almost immediately after written. So once you write here, it will start to lose bits. And the example is DRAM, dynamic random access memory. Okay. And finally, we have non-volatile memory non-volatile memory holds bits after power is no longer supply okay so we do not require power to hold bits so non-volatile memory falls between high end and middle range so these are our non-volatile range high end and middle range so as long as power is not supply, they will still high end and middle range will hold the bits, hold the data. Okay, so now let's move on to our next slide. In this slide, we will talk about the read only memory. As everybody knows, read only memory is non volatile memory. It means that the contents of the memory will not be wiped out, the bits will remain there even if the power is gone or power turns off. Now this can be read from but not written. So you can see here we can we don't have any read write. We just have enable and that's the external view of the room. These are your address lines and these are your only data output. So we cannot like write anything. Okay by a processor in an embedded system. So embedded system processor cannot write anything, but it can read. Traditionally written to program before inserting to embedded system. So this memory can be written to using programmer before it is inserted into the embedded system. Now the users where this memory is used store software programs so we can use this memory in order to store software programs for general purpose processors program instruction can be one or more rom words so we can have one or more rom words that contains program instruction these are your words as i told you we have horizontal lines so we can have either one two three each horizontal line can represent one instruction Store constant data needed by the system so we can hold like system configuration like BIOS something like that in RAM that remains constant. Now one thing good about this is that you can implement any combinational logic using this row. So we will look that in next slide. So let's start discussing the implementing combinational logic using row. 
So in this slide, we will talk about the example of 8 cross 4 ohm. And this is the internal view of 8 cross 4 ohm. So as you can see here, we have 4 bits. And we have how many words? 8 words. For 8 words, how many select lines we need? So let's start with this thing. Horizontal line represents words. So how many words we have? 8 words. So 2 to the power 3, it means we need three address lines in order to access eight words. So A0, A1, A2, and then we have enable. Vertical lines is equal to data, and we need four vertical lines for data. Line connected only at circles. So you can see here, these are connected, these are connected. This is not connected. This one and this one is not connected. Decoder sets two's line to one. So now let's see, we need three cross eight decoder because these are three inputs and we have eight outputs and eight words starting from zero to W8. And then we have these vertical lines, which are our data line. And these are wired, okay? These are wired. A wired OR connection electrically performs the Boolean logic just like OR, but it uses a we are using here a pull down resistor and diode per input. So this is worked like um, wired or gate and these connection are program connection. We can make and we can break it. Okay. These are all connected and then we have a or. So Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3 because of this four, because of this four, we have four data lines okay and then a naught to a2 just because of this two rest for three okay so we will use decoder we have w0 w1 w2 and we have here word seven zero to seven total eight words now decoder sets word two's line to one if address is input so it means if we have zero if we have 0, 1, 0, what is going to happen? We will select this word 2 because the boundary of this 0, 1, 0 is the decimal is 2. Okay. So data lines Q3 and Q1 are set to 1. So you can see here this is 1, this is 1, this is not connected, this is not connected. So what we will get here 0, 1, 0, 1. So the output will in that case in our ROM case will be 1010 one, zero, which is here. The output will be 1010. Word 2 is not connected with data line Q2 and Q0. You can see here. Okay. So word 2 is not connected. So this is how you can design the internal view of the ROM. So we are just reading the location. What is at the address 010, which is 1010. So, and these wired or are pull up, okay? Pull down, sorry. Pull down connection. So let's move on to our next slide. So as I've told you previously, like we can implement any combinational function using row okay any combinational circuit of n functions of k variables can be done with 2 raised power k into n row so you can see here if we have like the previous example we have three inputs a b and c these are the combination 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0, 1, 1, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And these are the outputs, okay? These are our outputs. So this is the inner view of the ROM. So what we are implementing here, 8 cross 2, it means that we have two outputs. So these are our two outputs, okay? X and Y. How many words? 0 to 7 words, okay? So these are our inputs. So we can map directly this. So you see here, word 0 is 0, 0, 
word one is zero so this is mapping so just like some now i can write like what is y y is equal to a bar b c a bar b bar c okay so this is our y likewise our z is a bar b bar c bar okay so this is our verb zero this is our verb one and up to verb seven so we can implement any combinational logic using two list bar k into n row so let's move on to next slide so in previous slide we talk about the writability the storage permanence the internal view and the external view of the ROM how we can use ROM to build any commercial logic now we'll discuss the mask ROM program okay so in a mask ROM the connection is programmed when the chip is being fabricated as I've told you when the chip is being fabricated at that time it can be programmed by creating an appropriate mask so we create a mask and after that we fabricate it okay mass program room obviously have very lowest write ability so the write ability is very lowest so you cannot like write again and again you can only write once but has higher storage permanence because you are just writing once so it has like higher storage permanence bits never change unless they are damaged okay such rooms are typically used after final design has been determined so once the final design has been determined we can then use this type of a room okay and only in high volume system for example like uh, we're building desktop computer in that desktop computer we can use mass rooms resulting in low unit cost because if we use in large numbers we'll have low unit cost okay because the nre cost spreads out so this is our mask from program room the connections are fabricated and using set of mask lowest writability highest storage permanence and final design we use them so let's move on to our next slide so in this slide we are going to talk about one time programmable form so before i go into these points let's discuss few of the comparison of this one time programmable rom one time programmable roms are also cheaper than other p roms p roms mean programmable roms often costing under a few dollars this also makes them more attractive in final products versus the type of P ROM and also versus masked programmable ROM. When time to market constraint and other cost make them a better choice. Because chips are so cheap, same designer even use OTP ROMs. Sorry, some designer even use OTP ROMs during design development. These designers simply throw away the used chip as they program new ones so like they are easily programmable and once they are used they simply throw away so in this ODP ROM connection program after manufactured by users so we program the connection once they are manufactured user provides file of desired contents of ROM so the user the end user provide the contents of the ROM file input to machine called ROM programmer so we can input the file using the programmer we required ROM programmer each programmable connection is fuse so each connection we call each connection is a fuse ROM programmer blows fuses where connection should not exist so in order to write something on this ROM 
we blow fuses like for example if we do not need any connection we want to store a bit zero we will blow a fuse so that was about the connections programmed after manufactured by user next point is writability so it has very writability typically written once as i told you and requires rom programmer device so it is just written once by the user and it requires this rom programmer device now what about like storage permanence obviously very high storage permanence bits do not change unless reconnected to programmer and more fuses are low now commonly used in final product because it's cheaper harder to modify okay so that was about the opd rom so like you cannot accidentally modify it because you need a programmer device so in advertently means accidentally so let's move on to our next slide so in this slide we are going to discuss ep rom which means which stands for erasable programmable rom so here you can see the four different views a b c and d so programmable rom components is a mos transistor so this is a mos transistors transistor has floating gate as you can see this is a floating gate surrounded by insulator now negative charges from channel this is your channel negative charges form a channel these negative charges center this one okay in the middle form a channel between source and drain now when these negative charges form a channel between source and drain it they store logic one so logic one is stored okay logic one is stored here now large positive voltage at gate if we apply large positive voltage at gate negative charges move out of the channel and get trapped so these negative charges will get trapped here okay in the floating gate storing logic zero here logic one now in order to erase we need to expose this to ultraviolet rays shining uv rays on surface of floating gate okay for 5 to 30 minutes so what will happen floating charges on the gate return to channel from floating gate restoring the logic one so we will go from 0 to 1 okay now in final figure ep rom package showing quartz window through which uv light so this is quartz window through which uv light enters so basically what is quartz uh, quartz is a chemical compound consisting of one part of silicon and two part of oxygen so we can simply call this quartz as si o2 silicon dioxide and this kind of a material is very abundant material in our surface now what about the writability of this and this is what is happening inside it uh, i just forgot to mention so this form a connection this and this form a connection okay so this is just single unit this one is just single unit where we have here like how many words one two three four five six seven eight words and four outputs four data so now moving back to our point better writability it provides better writability it means that can be erased and reprogrammed thousand of times so you can erase and reprogram it thousand of time easily reduce storage permanence so data will not last long program last about 10 years but is susceptible to radiation and electric noise so usually they last for 10 years but they are susceptible to radiation and noise typically used during design development when we are designing something or we are developing something we use this using design development phase so this is just one thing design development not two okay so when we are designing something in that phase we use 
erasable programmable ROM. So let's move on to our next slide, which is going to be our last slide of this lecture, lecture number five. So let's move on to it. So in this slide, we will talk about EEP ROM, which is electrically erasable programmable ROM. So this is kind of a modified version of our previous ROM that was erasable programmable ROM. However, this is electrically erasable. It means that we are not going to shine the UV light through quartz on the floating gates. Here programmed and erased electronically. So we are going to program and raise it electronically, not using some UV light. Typically by using higher than normal voltage. So what we are going to do when we have to erase it, we are going to use quite high voltage at the floating gate in order to erase the data from the ROM. So this is electrically erasable can program and erase individual words. So we can like program individual words and we can erase individual words as I've shown you in the previous picture where the gears were shown. It has better writability, can be in system programmable with built-in circuit to provide higher than normal voltage. So like we can embed this in as a system and we can, we can have some sort of like circuitry to provide high voltage in order to erase this memory okay so we can simply use this in in system programmable it's not like stand alone programmable but you can simply program inside your existing embedded system but we need to have some sort of circuitry to provide higher than normal voltage built-in memory controller commonly used to hide details from memory users so we have built-in memory controller which usually does that for you like providing higher than normal voltages writes very slow due to erasing and programming the writing speed is very slow of this ram because of like erasing and programming busy pin indicates to processor eep e rom still writing so we have like busy pin which indicates like eep rom is still writing or like it's erasing can be erased and programmed tens of thousands of times and the storage permanence of this EEP ROM is similar to EP ROM. Far more convenient, convenient than EP ROM, but more expensive because we need to have some extra circuitry, which is usually our memory controller. So that was about like lecture number seven, uh, five. So if you have any question, you can ask me at the end. Thank you very much.